guys, we're still in lockdown, but the birds are singing in the background. It's a sunny day and it's his birthday. So today we're going to celebrate um, arguably the greatest album of all time on Motown Records. It is What's Going On from Marvin Gaye. It's not always easy to uh, add anything to what has been said about this album. I have bought it on multiple occasions. I had a first vinyl copy I got off my friend Nicky back in the day. There's a reissue of a sealed copy for my son Marvin, whose actual birthday is June the 1st, and it was on June the 1st, 1970, where Marvin Gaye went into the studio to record the song, What's Going On. Uh, he got a kickback from the record company, Barry Gordy didn't want to release it, but when the single was successful, he got the go-ahead uh, to get some creative autonomy, and basically to create one of the greatest albums of all time. What the likes of Stevie Wonder and Marvin Gaye did by getting the autonomy uh, and getting that creative control, it really changed it up for Motown, for soul music in general, and for music in general too, because soul music started being, uh, being uh, seen in the same realm and importance as what jazz was, uh, with the added commercial appeal as well, and they started taking it seriously. Uh, it took the world a little bit to catch up, but it always happens, but catch up they did. And now if you look at any of the artists in the last 20 or 30 years, like some of my favourites, whether it be Erica Badu, Lauren Hill, whether it be Maxwell, D'Angelo, whether it be Amy Winehouse, Frank Ocean, uh, you name it really, the influence is there, it's very clear. Um, and not just on soul music as well, or not just on hip hop or black music. Uh, this was a game changer for everyone. And I think most people will agree that what's going on is one of the most important albums of all time. Ecological concerns as well, which weren't exactly all over uh, too many records at the time. Marvin, a pioneer in so many ways. We celebrate the aesthetics on Vinyl Love and the vinyl, the cover, quite simple, quite powerful. It's gatefold, it's got those amazing lyrics. Um, and obviously the credits too. The Funk Brothers, not always uh, credited for their impact on Motown and on pop music. And um, this very much was a Motown machine. It was like um, the Detroit car industry in the 60s where they were just churning it out. And I think Marvin Gaye, especially after Tommy Terrell's death, uh, he became quite uncomfortable because he wanted to do something a little bit more deeper. He saw what was happening in Vietnam and he saw what was happening on the streets. And uh, the ambitions are obviously there in the writing, it's well documented. Uh, but also musically, the Funk Brothers never really got the credit uh, for what they did. Um, but the actual jazz influence on this album, because uh, these guys are from that kind of background. So I, I think it effortlessly really combines jazz, soul, blues, gospel. And um, it also sings very, very smoothly, almost like a DJ mix before there was even proper DJ mixes. Uh, what's going on, what's happening, brother, on side one, when it takes it down into flying high and save the children, um, and right up to God is love, mercy, mercy me. It's it's easily the best side of a record I've ever heard. It flows effortlessly, and you can listen to this a million times in a row, and it still sounds as great today as it probably did back in the day. As of catalogue over the years, different versions of what's going on, uh, underrated gems like Here My Dear and In Our Lifetime, uh, some later reissues, that Midnight Love, which was really successful. Uh, let's get around one of the greats. Well, I want you definitely with Leon Ware uh, up there. Uh, the early stuff with Tammy Terrell, as I said, uh, he was badly affected by her passing. But Marvin Gaye's catalogue is really uh, incredible. But I think everyone will agree uh, that what's going on is up there with one of the most important albums in musical history. It's definitely the record I've also listened to more than anything else. It's the record I've played more than anything else as a DJ. Uh, there was one summer when I was younger, I just started DJing, and I went to United, the United States for the summer. I couldn't bring my turntable, so I was buying loads of records but couldn't play anything. And um, I remember I actually went and bought a little boombox and bought this on tape as well as Illmatic by Nas, and I used to listen to it constantly. Some nights I wouldn't even go out where all my pals were out drinking. And it was such a pivotal time for me. And this album was really, it was like uh, my closest companion, and it always has been since. I can listen to it forever, I will listen to it forever, and the world will listen to this one in 100 years time, in 200 years time, 
And that really is the ultimate litmus test for an album to create something as timeless and as powerful back then, which still is just as relevant and as powerful today. Thanks for joining me on my discussion on Marvin Gaye's birthday of his important What's Going On album from the orchestration, the writing, the themes, uh, the aesthetic, the relevance in 2020. It really can't be topped. We kicked off the series with A Tribe Called Quest and next time out we're going to look at a young singer who, uh, well, she wasn't around for too long but she did make three classic albums and she did make a massive, massive impact. Her name is Aaliyah. Join me next time on Vinyl Love.